Do you know that bicycles can move without any human help? So yeah, ghost riding bikes are real. And even if it's hard to believe, lots of things about bikes have been a mystery to scientists for decades. Push a riderless bike and it somehow balances itself, automatically steering to correct any wobbles until it finally slows down, loses momentum, and falls flat on its side. There is no consensus on why both ghost bikes and bikes controlled by people move in such a stable way. Now, there are various theories on how bikes manage to keep themselves upright. One of them is the gyroscopic effect theory. It says that the spinning wheels provide enough stability to prevent the bike from falling. You can test this out for yourself with your bike. Just take off one of the wheels – the front one is easiest to remove, and it's also cleaner – and hold it by the axle. Give her a good spin. Now try to twist the wheel by moving the axle. It resists, right? Now, while the wheel is still spinning, crook a finger under one side of the axle and let go of the other side. It stays there, as if some invisible force is holding the other side up. The gyroscopic effect doesn't fully explain the bike's self-balancing ability. Some people try to cancel out the effect by adding another wheel spinning in the opposite direction to the first one. But it didn't stop the bike from moving on its own. The caster theory comes into the picture. Imagine the wheel of a shopping cart. It has this nifty swiveling thing called a caster that automatically aligns itself with your direction. Well, bikes have something similar. The steering axis runs down the bike's fork. Suppose you extend that axis out. It hits the ground in front of where the tire touches the floor. So the steering axis is ahead of the contact point, just like on a shopping cart. This distance between the two points is what they call the trail. A longer trail makes a bike more stable, while a shorter trail makes it harder to ride. This theory isn't the only reason, either. Sure, the caster trail does affect how easy it is to ride a bike, and the gyroscopic effect does play a role in stability. But neither of these fully explains the self-balancing phenomenon of a bike. Engineer Jim Papadopoulos says that a bike with a significant negative trail can still be ridden as long as it has a weight jutting out front. That weight could come from cargo on a front rack. Now, you might think that after centuries of tinkering, we'd have all the answers. But nope. The first recognizable bicycle showed up in 1818. It was called Carl Drace's Dandy Horse, or Dracing. In April of 1815, Mount Tambora on the Indonesian island of Sumbawa had a massive volcanic explosion. The following year was named the Year Without a Summer. Europe and North America had a chilly summer. This eruption had profound consequences. So, what does it have to do with bikes? It's like the butterfly effect. That summer, oats were in short supply to feed horses. This made German inventor Carl Drace put on his thinking cap and explore a whole new way of transportation without our four-legged pals. That's when he came up with the predecessor of the bikes we ride today. It was pedal-free, and you had to kick your way forward like you do with a modern scooter. Over the next few decades, bicycles got fancy and wonderful designs. But the real star of the show, the modern safety bicycle, burst onto the scene in the 1880s. With its equally sized wheels and chain drive, it took the world by storm, making transportation affordable for everyone. It became a huge industry worth nearly $50 billion today. Yet, apart from a few minor tweaks, the design of the bicycle hasn't changed much since then. It's like a timeless piece of art. Scientists now believe that bicycles stay upright because of several factors that keep us from toppling over while cycling. You see, riding a bike is all about converting our pedal-pushing power into motion energy. Bicycles are like a blend of simple machines – levers, pulleys, wheels, and axles – working together to turn our legwork into movement. The spinning magic is all about angular momentum. Unless an outside force messes with it, the wheel insists on keeping its mojo strong and facing the same way. Angular momentum keeps the bike stable. And even if we cancel out the gyroscopic effect, the bike still manages to stay up. That's where the caster effect steps in, ensuring the bicycle stays steady. And let's not forget the sneaky centrifugal force, lending a hand and keeping us on track. The real secret is in the steering shape of the front wheel and frame. 
Experts call it front-loaded steering geometry. It's like the front of the bike is making a cool dance move and falls faster than the rest. So when a bike tilts to the side, the front wheel says, hey, not on my watch, and steers the bike back to balance. So next time you see a riderless bike cruising along like it's got a mind of its own, know that it's doing a graceful thing of constant falling and rebalancing, all thanks to its front-loaded steering geometry. Now, if a stationary bike is pushed forward, it'll keep moving, then it will slow down, and eventually it falls to the ground. A moving bicycle keeps going in that direction because of momentum. It falls because of gravity. Those two are huge parts of the process, too. But there's another player in this balancing act – you, the rider. Your brain is a genius at keeping you upright, even without you realizing it. When you lean to the left, your brain whispers, hey, let's balance that out by leaning to the right. OK, they can move by themselves or with us. But how do bicycles actually work? The bike frame serves as the foundation providing support and distributing your weight across the entire bike. As you ride, you position yourself toward the back of the bike while leaning forward over the handlebars for better balance. The frame is constructed from metal that have some flexibility, allowing it to absorb the impacts encountered during cycling. Gears, connected by a chain, amplify your pedaling force, enabling you to cover more distance with each rotation of the pedals. The wheel and axle form a simple smaller mechanism. When turned, the wheel can either amplify force or speed. Larger wheel diameters lead to greater speed enhancements. As you sit on the seat, the wheels bear your weight. The rubber tire is placed inside a wheel that features a rim and several spokes, which makes it sturdy and lightweight and reduces air resistance. The spokes are tightly pulled, resembling a spider web crisscrossing from one side of the rim to the opposite side. This clever design prevents the wheel from collapsing under the rider's weight. Hey, are you saying I'm heavy? <clears throat> Sorry. To stop, bicycles use friction-based brakes that turn kinetic energy into heat, slowing the bike down. The handlebars act as levers, providing leverage to steer the front wheel. Longer handlebars offer more leverage, but they also increase air resistance. Oh, there's also a new research center in the Netherlands. In a lab, researchers are trying to build all kinds of crazy bike designs to investigate how physics and cycling interact. They want to better understand how the simple parts of today's bikes work together. Another goal is to improve rideability or discover new ways of doing things. Who knows, a hundred years or so from now, we could be riding bikes that are designed in very unusual ways. It's not a coincidence that this base is in the Netherlands. The city of Amsterdam has earned its reputation as the new bicycle kingdom. And it's no surprise. The country boasts approximately 23 million bicycles. There are more bikes than people in this country. Way before we started calling them bikes, these two-wheeled wonders were known as velocipedes. But then a little French flair was added, and bicycle became the word we use today. You know the saying, it's as easy as riding a bicycle? Well, some people took it to another level. Let's talk about Elias Schwarzler, an Austrian mountain biking wizard. He broke the Guinness World Record with almost 170 miles per hour with a towed bicycle in 2022. That's like flying on two wheels. 